Hi, this is Med Tutor Barry, and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about Rene and Weber testing and how we can use these tests to differentiate between conductive and sensory neural hearing losses. So let's get right to it. Conductive hearing losses have to do with our outer and middle ear problems. Sensory neural hearing losses have to do with our inner ear problem, like the cochlea. So let's learn these tests through a series of examples, or two examples. <laughs> um, so let's get right to it. A patient comes in to your clinic and complains of hearing loss. As a physician, it's your responsibility to distinguish whether it's conductive in nature or sensory neural in nature. Now, how I like to start testing is I like to start with the Weber test. In the Weber test, you take a tuning fork and you keep it midline on the patient's skull, and you ask the patient if they can hear the sound equally in both ears, which is something a normal patient um, um, should um, say yes, respond yes to. Now, this patient said, no doc, I actually hear it louder in my left ear. Okay, this can mean Two possible things, right? It's either louder in the left ear or they're actually hearing it softer in the right ear. So we're between two choices here. Now according to the according to how we interpret Weber testing, if it's louder in the bad ear, it represents conductive hearing loss. So lateralization simply means the sound being louder in the bad ear. It represents conductive hearing loss. So if it's louder and let's say the left ear is the one that's the bad ear, it's a conductive hearing loss in the left ear. Or it can be louder in the good ear. That means the left ear is normal and it's actually the right ear that's experiencing sensory neural hearing loss and you hear softer on the right side. So now you're between these two options, right? It can either be conductive hearing loss in the louder ear or it can be sensory neural hearing loss in the softer ear. Now to move further from here, we have to do the Rene test. Now, how do we do the Rene test? We take a tuning fork and we start by placing it on the mastoid process of our patient, okay? And we ask the patient to let us know when they stop hearing the tuning fork. Now this time represents the bone conduction time. Once they stop hearing the tuning fork, we remove it from the mastoid process and we hold it up in the ear, uh, up in the air close to their ear, and that represents air conduction. If they continue to hear it in air, that means air conduction is longer than bone conduction if they continue to hear it in air. If they don't hear it in air, that means bone conduction is greater than air conduction. And this is only seen in conductive hearing losses. So how I like to proceed is I like to do the Rene testing in the conductive ear. So let's say I do um, my Rene testing in the, in the left ear. And my results show that bone conduction is louder than air conduction. Now this confirms, this confirms conductive hearing loss in my left ear. Okay, that means I can reject this possibility here. And this is my normal ear. Okay, so I always like to start with my louder ear uh, because bone conduction greater than air conduction confirms conductive hearing loss. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, so I go back to this patient. Let's say I do my Rene testing in my left ear to rule out conductive hearing loss. But what I actually get is air conduction is greater than bone conduction. This means 
I have to reject conductive hearing loss in this ear because my air conduction is greater than bone conduction. So I reject conductive hearing loss in my left ear. What that means is now I have to accept the other alternative, which is there is a sensory neural hearing loss in my right ear. So when I do the Rene testing in this ear, I should already know what to expect. I'm going to expect air conduction greater than bone conduction in my right ear, and that represents sensory neural hearing loss since this ear, they're hearing softer compared to the left or the good ear. So this is how you work through um, Rene and Weber testing. Quiz yourself, give yourself a few examples, and try to practice this um, at your own time. But hopefully this makes it a little bit more clear. Thank you for your time.